So we are ready for round two. From Asukwa area, the only gentleman amongst the ladies, Elvis Kusi Donko. Let's welcome him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus has done it again to bring all of us here one more time. And this time, we have been unleashed to transform our world. Oh, hallelujah. How many of us believe we are ready to be agents of transformation? The topic of today's sermon is God's children unleashed to transform their world. God's children unleashed to transform their world. Firstly, let's explain the key words. Children, anyone born from another and in the church of Pentecost, a child below the age of 13, unleashed to be let loose with power from your place of comfort to cause an effect, transform to bring about a positive change and world, your sphere, where you live, your classroom, your school, everything or any place around you. Our main scriptures will be from 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 and Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Now, God in his wisdom has endowed the church of Pentecost with a vision for each season. And we, the children ministry, who together with the youth ministry, make up over 70% of the entire church membership, surely have a very vital role to play on this possessing the nation agenda. Or oh, possessing the nation. Possessing the nation. Imagine a young shepherd boy or a lot in a big field looking up at a huge giant. He didn't have a fancy armor like the soldiers. All he had was a sling and a stone. But guess what? That boy wasn't scared. He stepped up in faith and with one shot brought down that giant. That boy's name was David, whose story is just one of young fellows in the Bible like us who did amazing things for the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I am communicating this truth to anyone under the sound of my voice that being God's child is not a matter of age. Being God's child means you have been born of God, a people of God who carries his genes, his divine nature, and transforming their world as Christ did. Today I want to ask someone here that, are you God's child? Can God call you his own? Are you fully equipped to be unleashed? How many people have you called and discipled into this Christian family? These are the questions I want you to think about. We will read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. All my scriptures are from the NIV. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen. From the scripture, God has called and chosen a specific group of people of which you and I are part and has mandated us to call others to this group. So many years ago, we were slaves to sin. We were dying and wallowing in deep darkness. Sin has gotten hold of us. We could not talk to God directly. We lost communication with him. All hope was lost. So we gave ourselves to the devil and he took the opportunity to steal, kill and destroy. That is when after some time, the mighty God of heaven, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, who is also our God for today, in his own mercy and love, sent forth his only begotten son to bring us from the sin and the chains of the devil. Oh, hallelujah. Through the blood of his only begotten son, Jesus, he has made us a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that we may declare the presence of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Now that we have seen the light and has come to the light, we also have to shine to others for them to see us and may also come to the light. Let's look at this scenario. Why does a street light go off during the day and comes on during the night? Just think about this for a moment. The light is of no use during the day, but very much needed at night in the dark. Oh, hallelujah. So as children of God, being the light of the world, and those reflecting Christ's character in this dark world, by embodying his values like love, forgiveness, kindness, and humility in our interaction, it also involves extending Christ's love by reaching out to those in need, by showing compassion, empathy, and actively demonstrating Christ's love in tangible ways. Oh, hallelujah. I want us to read a scripture from Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. 
Verse 14, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Verse 15, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Children of God, it is time to fulfill our purpose as God's holy people, his royal priesthood, to be agent of transformation and to possess the nation with the light we have been found. Oh, possessing the nation. Possessing the nation. Now, someone may ask of what power or authority can we be unleashed? I want us to pay critical attention to this scripture. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Amen. We see that when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we will be on the move, on leash, and we shall receive power. That is dunamis. When I say dunamis, say power. Dunamis. Power. Now listen, we cannot be on leash as children to places to possess and transform it without the coming upon of the Holy Ghost. May the Holy Ghost come upon somebody in the name of Jesus. Shout amen. Not by mind, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let us not forget Imano Kofi Pento, a seven-year-old boy in the Volta region who was on leash and prayed for his dead father, brought to life, and as a result, Transform his family and the whole community. I humbly beseech all parents to engage their children in a moment of prayer and Bible studies. Oh, hallelujah. As I conclude, someone as a child was called by God and anointed by the Spirit as a prophet and a judge and transformed Israel. Josiah, at the age of eight, was anointed the king of Israel. And from childhood, he brought the values and the principle of the kingdom of God back to the land of Israel, even as the church of Pentecost seeks to do that through the vision 2028 of possessing the nation agenda. All eight groups, everyone in our classroom, in our schools, will be agent of transformation. So my fellow children, how are we being agent of transformation? During break time in school, do we just gossip and play around all the time? Or we seize that opportunity to share Christ with our friends? Also, how do we present Christ in our community? Parents should encourage their kids to join ministries like Jetro Initiative and Community Children's Club. It's how build talent and they bring friends to Christ like it did for me. Imagine the impact if every church member participates in ministries like HAM, MPWDs and others and children actively share Christ through schools our church. Well, it turns the world upside down for you. Oh, hallelujah. Time will not permit me to talk about the young child who attended Jesus' meeting and offered this little bread to Jesus. And our Lord Jesus brought it and multiplied it. Don't think you have something small, like the little child. All Jesus is looking for is that you give him that small thing. Your life, he will break you, transform you, and use your life to bless many people. Oh, hallelujah. A woman of God who lived in the 1970s, Catherine Coleman, said, and I quote, God is not looking for silver vessels or golden vessels. He is just looking for yielded vessels, unquote. So are we willing to yield our life to the Lord for his use? As I summarize, we look at our calling as God's children who have been chosen by God and on leads to transform their world. And we look at how we are to shine as light in this dark world and how by the power of the Holy Spirit we can possess the nation in Jesus' name. I pray in the name of Jesus that as God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power and went about doing good, healing the sick, raising the dead, may God anoint you afresh to do exploit in Jesus' name. May souls be saved when we preach in Jesus' name. Right now, if anyone is here and has not accepted Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior, lift up your hands and say this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner and you came to die for my sins and resurrected for my justification. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless us all as we go out to transform our world. Amen. God bless. Oh, please, let's clap for our boy. God bless you so much, Elvis. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You listen from our judges. Thank you so much, Brother Elvis. You did so well again.
You did so well. I want to commend you for the punch in the ministration. What I mean is that we really get from you, like you are preaching gospel. We feel that you are feeding our spirit. You are just not rushing the words on us. And I saw this in the first ministration and the second. I want to encourage you yeah, to, keep, to keep to that. It's really very good. I also like the, the way you use the text, the main text, the first Peter uh, chapter 2 verse 9 to bring out, I mean, the background and bring all of us to the point of understanding that we were not a people and now we have become a people of God. God has forgiven us and we are God's special possession. I think it brought some wonderful understanding to the text. Uh, your audience engagement is very good. You kept calling for responses. I think it's very good. Along the line, I wrote that I don't see you speaking to children. But immediately I wrote it. You called out all the children and showed them what they must do. And your good quotations from all the sources, men of God, women of God, is very good. And where I thought I could catch you again was whether you would just go ahead and summarize without bringing the main point. That one too you did. And so you did so well. God bless you. Keep shining. God bless you, Elvis. Oh, let's clap. Let's clap, let's clap, let's clap. God bless you. Good. So if the genius gives us the approval, we'll give him a district. Wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I know genius will give that approval, right? <laughs> uh, a children assembly. Yeah, a director opened a children assembly uh, in Asim Fosu. So he'll be the presiding elder for the children's assembly in Asim Fosu. We are transferring him from Asoka to Asim Fosu. <laughs> All right, God bless you so much. Yes, all the way from Wa area. Gloria Zatu. Gloria Zatu. Oh, let's clap. I, I am a child, but that lives in me is greater than that of the world. I am a child, but that lives in me is greater than that of mm -hmm. the world is greater is greater is greater is greater i am a child but that lives in me is greater than that of the world. Jesus! Jesus! Shall we humbly pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you have given to us. We pray as we are about to listen to your word, may you make the word to be a blessing in us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I am grateful to the Almighty God for giving me this opportunity to share His word with His wonderful people. I would also like to thank the leadership of the Church of Pentecost for this wonderful initiative to allow children to preach the word of God on this side platform. May God bless them all. Please, I am speaking to you on the team. God's children are needs to transform their world. Amen. According to Billy Graham, if our children grow up with no understanding of right or wrong, no desire to live with integrity, no faith in God, they are supposed to be impoverished and they will miss their life for years good. The quote about fear us to understand that though the church is training children in a godly way, that should not be the end. God's children are therefore to be unleashed to demonstrate their desire to live with integrity. Hallelujah. Please, let's now consider some key things in our topic for discussion. I will begin with the word children. According to the Oxford Dictionary, children are persons who have not yet reached adulthood, whether natural, cultural, or legal. In our context, God's children are young believers who are still under the care of their parents, yet called to belong to God as special people. Secondly, unleashed, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, means to let happen or begin something powerful that once begun cannot be controlled. Also, in our daily setting, we all see ghosts, sheep, 
who after being loose from being tied the whole day ran out with some kind of speech. Out, boom, they go. Finally, transformation. According to the Bible, transformation means change or renewal from a life that no longer conforms to the one that pleased God. This can be referred to from the book of Romans chapter 2, verse 2. We will take our first scripture reading from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. Please, I'm reading from the Gideon's International Version. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you are not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. According to our scripture reading, as God's children, we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and we belong to God. We have been chosen as God's children to declare his praise to other children who don't know him. Therefore, in the midst of thief, sexual immorality, fraud, and all sorts of ungodly acts, we must be eager to do good works as people of God. Praise the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 18, from the NIV version, but Samuel ministered before God, even as a child, wearing a lining effort. Effort is a type of apron that, according to the Hebrew Bible, was worn by the high priest of Israel. We can learn from Prophet Samuel that even when he was a child, he ministered before God. In other words, he gave his life to Christ because his mother unleashed him for that purpose. We can refer from the Bible that though other children misbehave, Samuel was different. He he could not be influenced by his friends. As God's, as God's children, we have been unleashed for godliness, so we must be careful of the way we live. Hallelujah. As God's children, we must be ready to occupy higher positions in our classrooms and school. That will give us the opportunity to influence our mates with the principles and pre Principles and value of the kingdom of God. Unless as we are, we need to pursue academic excellence by studying to prove that our Lord Jesus is the source of all wisdom. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible admonishes us to study to show ourselves approved. God's children must show godliness and integrity, especially during examination. We must stand our guns and say no to examination while practice. Our own believing friends will turn to Christ when they see us excelling through diligence and integrity. Hi, hi, children. We will take our next scripture reading from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Please, I'm reading from the Gideon's International. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. The mandate of which Jesus empowered his church is to evangelize, and children cannot be left out. As children, we are to take active part in sharing the love of Christ to others wherever we find ourselves. We must also win harm, MPWDs, and lordship for Christ, possessing the nation. Possession the nation. Our colleagues on the street need Christ. It is a known fact that the agenda of the devil is to win children to himself. A famous secular humanist statement is the battle for the heart and mind of children is being fought in our classroom. This is a wake-up call for all God's children who have been unleashed to preach the gospel in our various classrooms with our lifestyles. Hallelujah. Our last scripture reading will be taken from Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. I'm reading from the Gideon's International Version. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of a wound, a reward, a reward, like arrows in the hands of a warrior, are like the children of one youth. Blessed is the man who filled his quivers with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the, in the gate. Hallelujah. God's children, we are inherited from God. God is counting on us, and we cannot fail him. According to Herod Beecher, children are the hands by which we take hope of heaven. My brothers and sisters, we are like arrows in the hands of God's church today. We have been prepared and unleashed to confirm the deceit of the devil, show godly character, and take over the church in the absence of our fathers. We are the hope of our world and the church. Praise the Lord. Jesus I would like 
to conclude by calling on the stakeholders in the church, parents, pastors, children ministry workers, presiding elders, to help train and unleash more children. To all children here, let's submit ourselves in our church so that we can be prepared and unleashed as God has purpose for us. Amen. In this presentation, I have tried to explain the term godly children, unleashed, transformation, and I have also encouraged all the key stakeholders of the church to train up children and unleash them. May God bless us all. Please, if you are here and you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, kindly come forward and accept Him. After me, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. You died on the cross and resurrected for my sake. From today, I take you, Lord, as my personal Savior. I will walk with you through all my life. So help me, Lord. Amen. As I have accepted Christ today, I am inviting you to fellowship with us. Pentecost Church is at every corner you find yourself, or any Bible-believing church that is near to you. Please don't be in hurry to go after the service. Can they occupy the front seat at my right-hand side? And we will have one-on-one -on -one encounter with you. For those who have accepted Christ today, God bless you. Finally, to those who have given their life to Christ, I'll encourage you to continue to keep hope alive. Be steadfast and in immovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord, for your labor will not be in vain. Amen. Please, I'm praying. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word you have given to us. We pray that may you help, let Father Lord, we pray that may you help us to understand your word, so that we'll be the doers of it. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's clap for our dear Gloria. Please clap, 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 clap. Give her some morale. Good. Morale, morale, morale. Will you listen to our judges? Gloria, well done once again. Thank you. Um, you did very well. Um, I particularly liked your introduction, you know, how you linked the quotation from, the quotes from Billy Graham, you know, linked it to what we are doing in this church for children, what we can do, you know, in terms of unleashing and then linking it to your, um, your topic. It was very good. Thank so you. well done um, on that one. I also like the practical challenge that you threw to children, especially with um, the exam or practices, the fact that, you know, we should deter from doing that. I think that was very practical. As God's children, we need to desist from doing things like that. And that was very good. And I also liked the fact that um, even though you were speaking on God's children, that you spoke to everybody in the audience. You spoke to presiding elders, you spoke to pastors, you spoke to parents, you spoke to children, including yourself. And I think that was very, very good. Um, two points I want you to look at. Um, the first one is, even in the first uh, message, the first sermon, you kept referring to Gideon's international version of the Bible. So I was wondering, you know, um, because I'm not sure I've come across um, Gideon's International Version of the Bible. I think Gideon's International is an organization that produces Bible and distributes Bible. But they normally use the King James. So the King James Version. So please take note of that, um, even as you, you go around. Um, Gideon's International is not a version of the Bible but they are distributors, okay? Is, is that clear? Thank you. Oh, you are welcome. And then, um, the topic was on God's children. I think generally, when we talk about God's children, all of us are God's children. So the definition that you gave us for the topic was a bit deficient 
in the sense that you were looking at the topic, the definition of the topic in terms of children. But generically, when we say God's children, everybody is God's, I mean, all Christians are God's children. So probably what you could have done was to say the definition of God's children is everybody. But in this um, presentation, I will be referring to so that you leave people clear in their mind. But I think that your composure, your engagement with audience, and generally, your delivery was very good. Congratulations Thank and well done. You. Congratulations. God bless you. From Ho area. Ho area. Michelle Makafui Mawita. Michelle Makafui Mawita. Unleashing the whole church into the world to transform me. Unleashing the whole church into the world to transform it. To preach the glorious word, busy lost in all good works. Save all the wounded, those living in darkness, and bring them into the light. Save all the wounded, those living in darkness, and bring them into the light. Fear not, the strength of the Lord will prevail. So arise, He will be with us till we win. Praise the Lord! Once again, I want to thank the leadership. For the gospel village you have given me to share the word of God with you. Praise the Lord! In September 2021, an 8 year Sunday school child with the name Michael Echampo, who worships at a Nasser district in Axim area, preached at a Sunday school rally under the power of the Holy Spirit, where four souls were won for Christ. This got the attention of leadership and the whole church. So, I'd like to encourage all children to do the same. Michael was captured on the 2022 Pentecost calendar and other literature. So, this now leads me to my topic God's children unleashed to transform their world. God's children unleashed to transform their world. My scripture reading shall be taken from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and Acts chapter 1, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 10, and Acts chapter 1, verse 8. All from the NIV. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and I read. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the presence of, the presence of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, into the ends of the earth. Amen? <clears throat> Once again, I am speaking on the topic, God's children unleashed to transform their world. And by the end of this presentation too, you will clearly understand what it means to unleash children. We shall also consider one way to unleash children and finally, two benefits of unleashing with children. During the first phase of the Possessing the Nations agenda, we saw the child of Jesus groups, many it's glorious and later revived it, equipped it and repositioned it. So this year, the church is sending everyone who have been endowed with disabilities back into the world to possess the nations for him, including with their children. Praise the Lord! This year, even as the church is unleashed with disabilities, we children must also be well unleashed in order to be able to hold onto the scepter when I can generation. It's no more. What is unleashed? What is unleashed? Like I said earlier, chairman defined unleashing as getting members out of their cultures, out of their cultures of the church. It's their sense of influence to transform them, including we children. So someone may ask, is there any need to unleash children? The answer is yes. You see, our main scriptures made us know that God called the church from darkness into his wonderful light and made us a holy nation, a royal priesthood, his possessions, in order to go and declare of him. And afterwards, ask them to go and wait for the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit so that the unleashing mandate will be fruitful. And because we will hold onto the scepter for the current generation, it's normal. Adults must take us along and teach us how to be unleashed and transform us, yes. Parents always try so hard 
to love their children all the time. But I can't and to every parent listening to me that the greatest love you can show to your child. It will unleash them, not into any ungodly acts, but into the world to transform their sense of influence with the values and principles of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah! How do we unleash children then? There are so many ways to unleash children, but I would like to quickly outline one of them to teach them moral conduct. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 40 says, Let all this be done decently and in order. Generally, moral conduct may be defined as the expected way an individual should behave in society. But biblically, moral conduct is the kind of right and wrong based on the word of God. And the teachings of Jesus Christ as Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 says, Train up the child in the way he should go, so that when he is old, he will not depart from it. There is a proverb in my local language that Akwame Javi Da Adawu O. This means that it takes godly parents to raise godly children. Children tend to emulate and pick up certain values and habits in their formative years. Parents must therefore exhibit Christ like nature, not only at church, but at home, since we children will be unleashed with what you have emulated. My godly children, let us also be ready to fully obey all the godly instructions given us by our parents. Amen. When the church was teaching with children what the morally, have it in mind that you are sowing a good seed for the future. It is the joy of every parent to know that they have children who can see them well in future. That is why the church must strive hard to impart positive things into with the children today to have impacts now and in the future with the unleashing mother. So praise the Lord. <clears throat> there are so many benefits when the church unleashes children, but I'll let's quickly outline two of them. Firstly, such a positive influence on a society. Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Sons are heritage from the Lord, children are reward from him. We the children are your sheep, and you are our shepherd. Therefore, inculcate in us all the tools that, are, that will help in our unleashing mandate. So, the challenge is to raise college children who have positive influence on the society now, even as we are children. Children who are unleashed are respectful. They are obedient. They have faith. They don't easily give up. So when children are unleashed with all this, they will surely relate this on a society positively, even as they transform their spheres and help achieve vision 228. Oh, praise the Lord! For instance, Cheto Initiative in my local assembly has brought statistical growth in the children's ministry because with the children, I will share with our friends what to learn. So they follow us to JM meetings without we inviting them directly. And they end up joining our church. This is what you call positive influence. Tell a friend, positive influence. Hallelujah! Secondly, it helps us to become effective too for the future. Psalm 127 verse 4 says, Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, a children born in one's youth. God's dealing with man is transgenerational. Our possessing the nation's agenda is not complete until successive generation is able to hold into the scepter when the current generation is no more. That is why the leadership of the children's ministry has come out with their theme, God's children unleashed to transform their world. So the church will strive hard to unleash with their children, even as they unleash their adults, so that we can equally continue from where they would end. All people listening and watching me everywhere strive hard to equip their children with kingdom values and principles at all costs to help possess the nations. So, in summary, by the grace of God, I have spoken on the theme of my message. God's children unleashed to transform their world. In this presentation, we have been able to go through what it means to unleash children. The need to unleash children. And we understood us who will hold on to the scepter when the current generation is no more. We also considered a way to unleash children when we said that the children should be taught good moral conduct. We further discussed two benefits of unleashing children. When we said it helps us to become effective too for the future and also to have a positive influence on our society. Remember that even God had to unleash himself in the form of Jesus to save us from our sins. Amen. So, in conclusion, the church can continuously have children who will be unleashed and help to transform others who will become intentional about the unleashing mandate so that our children can take over to tomorrow. Before God can unleash you as a child, you first have to accept him as the Lord and personal savior. Therefore, as I end my message, if you haven't accepted him, can you repeat this after me? Say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He died because of my sins and resurrected for my justification. 
Therefore, I accept him as my Lord and personal Savior. I will walk with him for the rest of my life. So help me, God. You have just become a child of God. Go to any Bible-believing church or any church of Pentecost close to you. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. God bless you too. Michelle, God bless you too. Oh, is that all we can do? Please keep clapping. Our judges, please. Yes, Michelle. Well done. Uh, you kept the same momentum for the two sermons. So you have delivered two powerful sermons in one sitting. God bless you and well done. You also gave a, a testimony as it were, somebody's life as an example to help us appreciate the message you were coming to deliver. And you gave us the source of that information. That was also a good one. You tried to let us know what you were coming to talk about, what is unleashing, how to unleash children, and the results that come out when children are unleashed. But my only concern is that the same issue that happened with your first presentation has repeated itself, meaning you speak very fast. Uh, your, your words come very fast so that for the audience to really grasp all that you are saying is a bit difficult. And you finished uh, with uh, a minute and maybe 45 seconds, about two minutes left. Uh, it means that lower the rate, the speed of delivery so that we can get the input. It could be that that's how you speak, but try and lower the tempo so the message comes out very clearly. But I realize that you are engaging the congregation. Sometimes you tell us to tell those sitting by us. But because the rate is fast, I was hearing that when you asked that to say it, few people said it. Meaning few of them were really catching what you were saying. But all in all, the message was good. The outline was there. The content was great. God be with you. God bless you. Well done. God bless you, Michelle. Please take your microphone. Give it to the next person. Good. Oh, let's clap for our daughter. Let's clap for her. Give her some morale. All right. From Takwa area. From Takwa area. Nana Ama Finba White. Nana Ama Finba White. We are heads of the Father. We are joint heads. With the sun, we are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are what we are heads. So oh, we are head, we are head of the Father. We are joined head with the sun. We are children of the kingdom. We are family, we are one. Please, shall we pray? Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for such another great opportunity. Speak through me to your people. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. J.I. Nurturing unto godliness. Community Children Club. Changing my society for the better. The spirit himself testify with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if indeed we are God's children, then we are heads to heads with God and we are co-heads with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we share in his glory. Amen. I'm speaking on the topic, God's children unleashed to transform their world. God's children unleashed to transform their world. From my presentation, we will look at who are God's children and ways to transform their world with? All Bible readings are taken from the New International Version. Let us read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and Acts chapter 1, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And I read, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession, so that you may proclaim the praise of the one who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, praise the Lord. 
Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Amen. Beloved, Apostle Peter is reminding us that we have been called out of the darkness into his marvelous light. He has made us his own people, his royal priesthood, which means we are both king and priest for the Lord. Hallelujah. We have been called to bring praise to his name. As God's children, we have a core mandate, and that is to reflect God's glory in our world. We are an ambassador of God. So let us portray Christ-like character at everywhere. Oh, hallelujah. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be Christ's witness in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Amen. From this scripture, it says, You shall receive power. Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you not only sit in the garden of the believers, but you'll be Christ's witness in your family, school, community, your country, and to the end of the time. Amen. Someone was a little boy, just like us, but ministered before the Lord under Eli. In First Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. Josiah became king of Judah when he was eight years old. Second Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Do you remember the story of Naaman? If God used a little servant to bring transformation into Naaman's life, then we are not too young to be used by God. God can use us only if we make ourselves available. Hallelujah. Samuel and Josiah were all God's children like us, but they transformed their world with the values and the principles of the kingdom of God. If we children can transform our world, then our parents and the church has a role to play. Who then are God's children? John chapter 1 verse 12. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, has been given the right to become children of God. Hallelujah! Romans chapter 8 verse 14 also says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are God's children. So as we have accepted Christ and the Holy Spirit has come upon us, we have a responsibility now is to transform our world with the values and the principles of the kingdom of God. In Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6, it says, start children of the way they school and even when they are old, they will not turn away from it. The emphasis is on start. The foundation of your child development is the key to transform this world. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Let us look at some of the way the church can help us children to unleash and transform our world. One, raising godly family to impact the church and the state. When the church raised godly family with the values and the principles of the kingdom of God, the family will enhance them on their children. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. We see a godly family raised by the church unleashed. The family passed down through faith from the grandma Lois to Eunice, Timothy's mother, and to Timothy himself. Hallelujah. Two, the church should ensure that children's ministry teachers and volunteers are constantly to provide the basic training on the new vision and the changing times we live in. Man, holiness. Some of the parents' roles to play. Two godly family raised by the church unleashed. The family impressed them, God's children, to unleash. One, personal devotion. Like Lois and Eunice, every godly family, based on the word of God, they have their devotion by so doing. They establish a family altar where the father administers the word and the wife supports him like a puritan. This will let God's children to have a flourishing life through personal devotion. Hallelujah. We can see this practice from Apostle Frederick D. Walker, the first general leader of witness movement, and his wife, Mama Florence Odi. They pass their faith to their children. Apostle Daniel Ochoa Walker retired, the vice chancellor of the Church of Pentecost University College. Hallelujah! Two, engage in service and generosity. Teach your children the joy of serving others and sharing their blessings. Engage in acts of kindness, such as volunteering and helping those in need. And let them know that giving is one of the characteristics of God that every child of God should demonstrate. And there is more blessing than giving than receiving. Hallelujah. And this will unleash in sacrificial giving and tithing faithfully unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Mama Christian Obo impacted 
poured the service and generosity into her children. Mama Eunice Addison also impacted this faith into Apostle Addison, retired the third general secretary of the church. Hallelujah. Mama Christian Obo, the stone. Dickness Eunice Addison, the voice. Apostle Atto Addison, retired. Ministry of Religion. What a blessing. I pray that may God bless you as you teach your children the joy of serving others and sharing their blessing. Hallelujah. Jesus. We children must be obedient to our parents and learn from them. As Timothy learned from his mother. And Samuel was obedient to Eli. And Josiah kept God's love. We should also keep the word of God. And live with the values and the principles. And the lifestyle of the kingdom of God. As I bring my message to climax. I preached about God's children. Unleashed to transform their world. God's children. Unleashed to transform their world. We have been called out of the darkness. Into his marvelous life. And for God's ultimate go for us is to be like Jesus Christ because we are not like the world or oh, possessing the nations possessing the nations in summary God's children are called to witness God in their family school and pray for the nation as a whole to transform this world with the values and the principles of the kingdom of God key point to note one we are the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special people, called into the marvelous light. Two, Samuel and Josiah were all God's children like us, but they transformed their world with the values and the principles of the kingdom of God. And last but not the least, three, the church should ensure that children's ministry teachers and volunteers are constantly provide the basic training on the new vision and the changing times we live in. Dear special ones, for God to remember, we are heads of God and we are co heads with Christ. And for that matter, you represent God on earth. So let us live a blameless life and live with the values and the principles of the kingdom of God. Dear beloved sitting here or, and watching me, you want to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Say this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life as my Lord and personal Savior. I believe that you died for me. And resurrected for my redemption. And you are in heaven interceding for me. Amen. Please know that as you have prayed this prayer, your name has been written in the book of life. Find a Bible believing church. I recommend the church of faith called you now. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you too. God bless you. Please let's clap. Let's clap. Clapping is an offering, so let's clap to the glory of God. Let's clap. Good. Our judges. You, yeah, you came with a lot of energy. Yeah, I think that, I think that you also changed your dress. You freshened up. Yeah. And the energy was very good. I don't know, maybe if all the participants get a chance to do this, maybe to give them new energy for the second round, but you came in really poised. I like the way you outlined the sermon. I liked the fact that you made us know what exactly you'll be driving at. The foci were two. You, you were going to let us know who were God's children. And the number two, ways, that, ways by which we could transform our world. And you kept to it. Though I'll raise a question on one of them, the last one. And I love all the supporting texts you brought. You brought the main text and brought a number of scriptures to support your point. The fact that you picked all of them as children. You mentioned Samuel, you mentioned Josiah, and then you also mentioned Nemes and Neman Seven. I think these are very powerful. Yeah, and then uh, I thought that maybe to polish up the more. Maybe you could find other ways of engaging the audience apart from amen, hallelujah. The only way with which you were <laughs> engaging the audience was when you said, praise the Lord, then they say hallelujah. Maybe you could, you could explore other ways like asking questions and, and, and other things like that. When it came to ways by which we could transform our world, I thought that you used another path. You used another path altogether. The, the point we we're bringing were how we could develop our children, how we could raise them up. Yeah, but you promised that you would rather let us, especially our children, because this topic is speaking to children. I thought you were going to point out ways that children could transform their world. I, I, 
you brought some of them, but I didn't hear you too much on that. Maybe next time you can do that. But all together, you are looking beautiful, you are strong, and your points are really clear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, let's clap for Nana Ama Finba White. Nana Ama, God bless you so much. The last on the bill for this final round, coming from Kaneshi area. Princess Abla Lili. Princess Abla Lili. Unleashing the whole church into the world to transform it. Unleashing the whole church into the world to transform it. Jesus! Jesus! Please, let's close our eyes and pray. Glorious Father, we thank you for today. It is my prayer that you speak through me to speak to your children in the language they will understand. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I am grateful to God for how far he has brought us. Glory be to his name. I will be speaking on the children's ministry theme for the year, which is God's children unleashed to transform their world. God's children unleashed to transform their world. This year, as we have been told, we have been unleashed to transform our world. And I bless the Lord that we children have not been left out in this glorious agenda. When we refer to children, the world may see us as weak, fragile, dependent, incapable, and even vulnerable. And some may even ask, can anything good come out of them? This is not how God sees us. God refers to us as his friends. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, Jesus says, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. So children, God sees us as capable. God sees us as partners in the kingdom business and as agents of transformation. So children, we are capable of transformation. Can we say this together? I am capable of transformation. Hallelujah! I would like to explain some key terms in my topic. Unleash. It means to let go, to release, and to set free. This is made with a force to cause a change. Two, transform. This is when there is a complete change in someone or something. Three, our world. Our world refers to our surroundings or anywhere we find ourselves. So this year, we children are also being released to cause a change wherever we find ourselves. Hallelujah! I would want us to consider a story in the Bible about how young Jesus impacted his world from Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 52. The Bible gives us an account of Jesus Christ at the age of 12. At the age of 12, Jesus Christ and his parents went to a festival in Jerusalem. On their way back home, they realized that Jesus Christ was not with them. They decided to go back into Jerusalem. When they got there, they found Jesus Christ at the temple, sitting among the religious leaders, listening to them and asking them questions. The Bible says that all those who heard him were amazed at his understanding. Why were they amazed? A 12-year-old child, teaching, asking questions with understanding and impacting the religious leaders. It wasn't a normality for children to do that. But you see, Jesus didn't consider the fact that he was only a child. He went ahead to bring transformation. So, can we all praise the Lord? Shall we open to our key scriptures? First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 and Acts chapter 1 verse 8. First Peter 2 verse 9 and Acts chapter 1 verse 8. All my readings will be taken from the Good News Version. 1 Peter 2 verse 9, but you are the chosen race, the king's priest, the holy nation, God's own people, chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God, who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power, and you will be my witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. From the scriptures, I will say that 
just like Jesus, our children, we are chosen. Chosen to make impacts and transform our world in any small way we can. And as a chosen people, God has given us power to transform our world through the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord! So as chosen children, what is our world and how do we transform it? As a chosen child, our world is our homes, our schools and our communities. These are the major places we interact. We will transform our world by how we live, in our speech and in our actions. We need to be bold to share the word of God with our friends and with our families. We have been taught so much in our various churches. So it is time for us to rise up and transform our world. As chosen children, if we want to transform our world, we need to be obedient to the instructions we receive from our parents and teachers so that we are equipped with kingdom values and principles such as love, integrity, prayer, godliness, and others to transform our world. We are admonished in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2 to do so. Praise the Lord! Another way we can transform our world is by availing ourselves. In John chapter 6, verse 1 to 15, the Bible tells us of a little boy who gave his five loaves of bread and two fishes to Jesus. And in an instant, 5,000 people who were hungry were fed. This little boy gave what he had and brought transformation in the life of 5,000 people. Children, let us not be little ourselves. We are capable of transformation. As children, all we need to do is to avail ourselves when we are needed to serve in our homes, schools, and communities. We should free do so, and God will use us to bring transformation. Oh, praise the Lord! What is the role of our parents, teachers, and the church? As children, we look up to our parents, teachers, and the church for guidance. Please teach and guide us in the way of the Lord, just as Timothy needed Paul, Elisha needed Elijah, Joshua needed Moses, Ruth needed Naomi, and Mary needed Elizabeth to guide and mentor them. And after they took over, they brought transformation. We also need to be guided and mentored in our young days so that we can bring transformation in our world. Oh, praise the Lord! Parents, involve us in Bible studies. Pray with us. Fast with us. Have morning devotion with us. Teachers, continue to mold us in the way of the Lord. Parents and presbyters, involve us in church activities. I thank God for initiative such as the Jethro Initiative and Community Children's Club, which are directed towards nurturing children in godliness. This has been a great blessing to us in guiding and mentoring us. Let us give a round of applause to our leaders who brought this initiative. What is the role of the Holy Spirit in transforming our world? If we want to effectively transform our world, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit therefore plays a major role in transforming our world. He gives us power, strength, and the ability to do so. It is my prayer that even as we are seated here, the power of the Holy Spirit will energize us to transform our world. Praise the Lord! As I conclude with my sermon, I have explained the children's ministry theme. God's children unleashed to transform their world. I said that as children, we have been released into our homes, schools, and community to transform them. We can do that through our speech and through our actions. We need to make it a point to share the word of God with our friends and with our families. I also said that we need to be available to serve and God will use us to bring transformation. I also mentioned that as children, we have a duty, which is to be obedient to the instructions we receive from our parents and teachers. And our parents, teachers and the church, they also have a duty, which is to mentor and guide us in the way of the Lord. Lastly, I said that we need to fully depend on the Holy Spirit to empower us to transform our world. Praise the Lord! I would want to charge you with 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says that, Do not make anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So, as a chosen child, I, Princess Ablali, have resolved to be an example wherever I find myself. I have resolved to fully depend on the Holy Spirit to empower me to transform my world and to fully avail myself as the vessel the Lord can use. 
it is my prayer that this will be a resolution as well. So that together we can transform our world. May the Lord God bless his word. Amen. Today is a day of salvation for anyone who can hear me. If you can be unleashed and cause transformation, you should have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. If anyone, after listening to the word of God, wants to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, kindly lift up your hands and say these words after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. And you died for my sins on the cross. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Write my name in the book of life. In the name of Jesus. God bless you all. Amen. See you, princess. God bless you. God bless you. All right. God bless you. You listen to our judges. The home support is amazing. <laughs> My, my dear princess, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, great Accra, thank you very much. Um, princess, how do you feel? I feel excited. You feel excited. And I'm sure, I'm sure you also feel very encouraged from yes. the home support, right? Yes. <laughs> All right, so um, thank you so, 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 so much. I think you are our final contestant, um, hopefully, for um, this year's Preacher Kid um, grand finale. And you have not disappointed. You have not disappointed. Um, I think, I think um, the energy and composure and inspiration in your sermon <laughs> started um, started right from the beginning you know from your entry even to the podium um, I really like the way you already inspired us you know and showed us the mind of God concerning children um, contrary to what the world believes of children and I thought that that was very very powerful and um, because we must we must always take and depend on what God says because um, God's verdict and God's opinion is the best so the world says children are vulnerable children that do not have anything to bring to the table but you made us understand that that is not how God sees and I thought that was very, very inspirational. So God bless you. Um, I, I also, I also loved the way that you, you clearly articulated um, some of the ways in which children can be unleashed to transform their world. And you did that with relevant scriptures as well. And that was very good. You did the same for parents. You did the same for teachers, and you did the same for the church. So you didn't leave anyone out um, in terms of benefiting from your sermon, and that was powerful. Uh, I also like the way you actually related Acts chapter 1 verse 8, which was one of your key scriptures um, to the sermon, in which you shared with us the role of the Holy Spirit in helping us to bring um, transformation. And last but not the least, the charge from 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 as you were ending your sermon as you were ending your sermon um, was very very powerful I thought that you know the only thing I was going to say you know that you were you, you, you were supposed to go and work on was to say that you didn't link your sermon with the altar call but before I could say Jack you had already so wonderfully 
explained uh, the sermon to the altar call. So, Abla, well done. Congratulations. You've done so well. I think that you deserve this massive uh, home support. Well done, and God bless you. Well done, and God bless you. Take your microphone. God bless you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. So now our judges are ready. Let's welcome our chief judge, Apostle Dr. Kennel B.G. Kumi Wood. Oh, let's welcome him with a clap offering. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Preacher kid. You people didn't check the slogan. Preacher kid. Possessing the nations with the word of truth. So preacher kid, the response is possessing, possessing the, the nations, nations with, with the, the word, word of truth. truth. Preacher kid. Possessing the nations with the, the word, word of truth. truth. Preacher kid. Possessing the nations with the word of truth. Jesus. Friend of children. Jesus. The one who welcomes all children. We give glory to God for another year of preacher kid context. And we are happy that our young ones have gone through the contest from local through district, area, regional, zona, and today they are at the national level. So I must say that all five of them are winners. Let's put our hands together for them. All five of them have done excellently well. They have delivered the word of God as guided by their handlers. We scored them based on the following criteria so that we are all aware how come they place the places that they've had today. We look at clarity of the sermon. Clarity of the sermon, the total score is 25%. Faithfulness to the text. If you quote and you exercise this, you derive your points from it. Faithfulness to the text is 25%. Relevance or application of the text is also 25%. How you organize the sermon, organization of the sermon is 10%. Delivery, how you vocalize and deliver it the sermon is 10%. So you see that the 10% is no match to the content of what you present. Appearance, how you dress up and come on stage, is 5%. So your appearance counts, but it's the least of the score. Based on that, we scored our contestants And from the score, the fifth position the fifth position goes to Michelle Mauta Makafui. But they all understand they are winners. The fourth position in this is National Preacher Kate Contest goes to Gloria Zato. When is coming, is doing. The third position, which is the second runner up, which is also the second runner up, is Nanama Finba 
White. Now, so now, home support against delivery. <laughs> now, we have. Princess Abla Lily and Elvis Kusi don't come. Of the two, the one who emerged as the winner in the sixth National Pitcher Kid competition held on the 15th of September 2024 at PIWC Atomic Kabenya. The city on the hill is Elvis Kusi Duncan. Shall we do it better until the Lord? <laughs> so all the way from Asoka, Master Elvis Kusidonko is this year's winner. And the first runner-up is Princess Abla Lily. Princess Abla Lily. So having done our job, we'll hand over to the leaders now for the presentations to be done. Thank you very Congratulations much. Congratulations to you all. You did excellent. Thank you very much, Apostle. Jesus has really won. Now, we come to the awards. Now we have fantastic prizes for the contestants, all of them. We even have some for the local assemblies. Now to the fifth position, would like to give the details of the awards. We have a beautiful hamper for the fifth position. The hamper is full and filled to the brim. Shall we have the hamper here? The hamper contains provisions. We have rice, biscuits, milo, milk, sugar, anything you can think about for breakfast for the rest of the year. We also have fabrics for the contestants and then we have a piece of cloth for the mother because she has also done a yeoman's job and then to the father we have also a fabric to show our appreciation and then we have stationery and we have christian literature we also have some school books and some exercise books Added to that is a cash prize. This is a fact one, going to our contestants coming all the way from whole area. And then we have this great certificate of excellence to show that you are a champion in your own right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to do us the honest, we would like to call upon Apostle Tony Mensa to present the award.
Sorry. Apostle Tony Mensa is is coming. Shall we give it up to Apostle? He's the host apostle here. And then there is a television set for the local assembly. Will the area leader kindly come up? The whole area leader. Shall we give it up to him? Thank you very much, Apostle. Now to the fourth position. The area leader is here for the television set. Apostle has left too soon. Um, Apostle, there's something else to do. Sorry about that. There's a television set for the local assembly and you would have to do the presentation as well. Now, going to the fourth position. God bless you, Apostle. God bless you, Pastor. Oh, please clap, 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 clap. That is just beautiful. It is beautiful. A wonderful pastor. God bless you. Now, we come to the fourth position. We have a certificate of excellence just to prove a point that you are a champion. No matter the position, you are a winner. Now, to do us the honors, we have Mrs. Director coming up to do the presentation. Mrs. Jemima Avon, you're coming up. Shall we give it up to Mama? There's a hamper. In fact, this one contains things that will go beyond 2024. We have provisions, that is, groceries for the whole family. We have fabrics for Mommy and Daddy. We have the Christmas fabric for our contestants. So, to do as the honest, Mama Director. Will the area leader come up for the television set for the local assembly? What area? Oh, can we clap? Can we do better than this? Yes. While they take their photograph, we go to the third person, the second runner-up, coming all the way from Takwa, Nana Ama Femba White. We have Apostle De La Kwampa, Apostle Dr. De La Kwampa, doing the presentation on our behalf. Apostle Dr. De La Kwampa. Will the Takwa area leader kindly come up? Oh, please keep clapping. It's a gangantuan feat. God bless you, Apostle. Now to the first runner-up. A certificate, a hamper, and a fat envelope. To do us the honors, we call upon the patron of the children's ministry, Prophet David Kankambedito. 
This is the, our grandfather. Clap, 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 clap. Abna is from Kaneshi area. Will the assistant area leader, Kaneshi area doesn't have an area leader. Will the assistant area leader come up for the television set? Can we clap, 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 clap? Now to the winner. To do as the Annas as the General Secretary of the Church of Pentecost, Apostle Jehu Obobi. Can we stand and give the winner a standing ovation? leader for Asqua. Asqua area leader is here. Oh, clap, 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 clap for the champions. Thank you very much, Apostle General Secretary. Thank you very much. Now, behind the success, we have some special teachers we call trainers or coaches. They've worked tirelessly to get these children to this level. Our amazing coaches, would you like to come up for your awards? Now, we would like to call upon the coach for Miss Gloria Zatoy Wa Area, Madam Mabel Opokuya. To do as the honors, the youth director, Madam Opokuya, coming all the way from Wa. She's the farthest, so she should be presented the first. And the next is to Nana Abes Coach, Nana Mes Coach. This is the certificate. Nana Mes Coach. Nana Mafimba White Coach, Mr. Samuel Quenchi. Mama Dansua is doing as the honors. And then for Michelle, we have Mr. Samuel Atenu Tete. Mr. Samuel Atenu Tete. Apostle Boache is doing as the honors. And then, Madam, there's another lady here. Miss Daniela Oyekwafu from the Kaneshi area. Mrs. Patron is doing as the honest. Mrs. Patron, Mama, please come. And then to the coach of the winner, the lead judge, with military precisions.
teacher Daniela Oyekwafo from the Kaneshi area. Now to the coach of the winner, Madam Georgina Owusuansan, all the way from Asukwa area. Apostle Kumiwood will do us the honors. This is the coach of the winner. Can we have a Sukwa area come up? Asukwa area, would you like to come up stage? Asukwa, the winning area. All the way from the Ashanti region to win this contest. Shall we clap for the Asukwa area? Glory be to God in the highest, hallelujah. Singing glory be to God in the highest, hallelujah. Everybody sing hallelujah. Everybody sing hallelujah. Everybody sing hallelujah. Have your seats. 